Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Thursday, February 2nd, 2017 edition of VR News. Fluria Gaming News, that's where we're going to start. Let's start with the game Homebound. Now, Homebound is going to be hitting the Oculus Rift and Vive soon. They don't say when, so hopefully first quarter within the next couple of months. But it looks a lot, on the surface at least, like a drift, which itself is pretty heavily based on a certain Sandra Bullock movie that came out. Albeit, Homebound looks quite a bit better graphically, and it looks like a more robust version of that. But until we can, you know, test the gameplay, that's just speculation. But it looks good. If you like space and you kind of like leaning more towards the realistic aspect of being in space in VR, this might be a game for you. So keep your eye open for that. And I will mention it if I hear it again. Next up, we have a submarine game called Atlantic Ghost Submarine. And let me just give you a quick little background. My buddy Exidy from Friday Night Gaming Night, he and I have been buddies for 34 years since grade four. I've mentioned that before on here, I think. And we've got lots of interest in common. Lots. As we should, being best friends. And having been around each other that long. But submarines, probably not quite as passionate about submarines as he is. I think they're cool. I like them. I like Silent Hunter on the Commodore 64. But not to the same extent as him. All right. Some people have watched Star Wars 12 plus times. Exidy has watched Hunt for Red October probably over 20 times. Loves the book more than the movie. Has probably read that double that amount. K-19, Widowmaker, his favorite sub-movie. I don't even want to guess how many times he's seen it. He physically can't pass it in a directory and not want to watch it. That's how much he likes K-19, Widowmaker, Silent Running, Dust Boot, all of those. When I told him about this game, Atlantic Ghost Submarine, he literally said, I'd sell my left testicle to be able to play that. Now, again, he's very passionate about it. Me, probably not that passionate. I would not be willing to go that far to play this game, but I understand where he's coming from. So what makes this game pretty special is the fact that it's going to be primarily a multiplayer experience. You are going to man, along with a handful of other people, a German World War II era sub, the Type 7, which is UF-995, yeah, UFC-995, I believe, and it follows kind of a game loop you're going to find convoys, go through the battle, either win or try to avoid depth charges and escape. That's kind of going to be the main game loop. What they're shooting for, yes, they've only got the one type of sub. You wouldn't be able to get it from the Japanese point of view or American point of view, etc. But the realism is supposedly spot on, as close to one-to-one -one as possible. So if there is a toggle or a dial... In the actual Type 7, it's probably going to be on the VR side of things. So, very, very cool. If you are somebody who's into subs, maybe as much as Hexity, probably a game for you. Hopefully that'll be available soon. They haven't said specifically other than September 2017 is the likely date. Uh, Vive version is the initial one with plans for Rift afterwards and hopefully PlayStation 4 sometime after that. Next game, probably more experience, is Everest 53. 1953, of course, being the year that Hillary and Norgay ascended Mount Everest. The first humans, well, at least in recorded history that we know of, to make the ascent with equipment that by today's standards would be, holy crap, primitive. Yet they made it. And you know what? Just to give you an idea of how dangerous it still is, even today with all our equipment, technology, people die. Lots of people die. There's usually people dying every single year when climbing season is, is on. There's hundreds of bodies that pepper the way to the summit. Some of those bodies have nicknames like Green Jacket, Orange Boots, in the 80s, you know, the flamboyant neon skiing colors in the early 90s were in. People wearing that gear from back then, the climbing gear anyways, 
died and are perfectly preserved you know on your way because it's too dangerous to remove the bodies so think about that you as a climber you're passing bodies pretty much treated as landmarks now if that doesn't bring home how freaking dangerous what you're doing is i don't think anything will and it's just sheer determination at that point so that'll be interesting hopefully it's a bit of an involve involved experience not like the other everest one which was over way too quick in my opinion so we'll see the added little bit of cool kind of fact on this is the descendants of both hillary and norgay are producers for this so two sons of norgay and i believe grandsons for hillary producers for the game very cool and the last game i want to talk about is landfall landfall is an rts game in virtual reality it's going into a beta, an Oculus open beta. That's the platform it's launching on February 2nd to 6th. So kind of over that weekend. If you're into RTS games, especially want to try one in VR, give this a go. See if you can get in on the beta. And if you do, let us know here what it's like because it looks pretty damn cool. Whether it's as fun as it looks, you'll have to tell us. Next story yesterday now just a reminder guys when i talk about certain news topics that you don't like for those of you who aren't aware there's timestamps for every story in the description below every single night without fail i make sure i include those so if you don't like a specific story or you're sick to death with this story the case skip right by there you go for the rest of you let's get into it so yesterday I talked about the possibilities of an injunction still being there at some level, even though they didn't win in an area where an injunction would have almost been a natural for them. It's still a card they could play. And what I qualified that with yesterday was saying, depending on how stuff plays out over the next few weeks. What happened today was exactly what I meant by that. You would hope that both sides could kind of zip it shut, but did not happen. Carmack, well, he had to say something. And then, of course, ZeniMax follow suit, and they have to say something. And before you know it, it escalated into a war of words. Like I said, the ball very much still in play on this one, guys. But just to sum it up, I'll have the links. You can read it. Both sides had a lot to say. Carmack side of the equation. He basically had has zero respect for that expert that they called up. He says it wasn't copyright, maintains that, you know, by that definition, every fantasy book would be a copy of blah, 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 or every sci-fi movie a copy of something else. He says, when you go into, you know, abstract layers away from that, it's its own thing. Otherwise, everything would be a copyright of everything else. And I, I get what he's saying to a point, absolutely. Whether he's right or wrong, though, like I said, we still don't know exactly where the truth lies because we have no access to most of this stuff. And it's going to be years before freedom of information and we're able to see and kind of go back and find the truth. But for now, that's kind of his stance. Basically, that if what the expert showed, which often he said they couldn't even read in court, it was often longer than the original code, he would have basically got mocked on the internet for what he showed in court. And you could tell that was Carmack's way of saying, look, and a jury's not necessarily going to know that because they're not the experts, but a lot of coders on the internet that do coding for a living would have caught on on that. But hey, you're in a courtroom and that's what you have. You've got a jury of your peers. Of course, ZeniMax, for their part, shot back and they're adamant that it was in fact this so it was tit for tat going both ways and hopefully lawyers reached out to both sides today and said shut up no more this will take care of itself do not bring this into the court of public opinion anymore so we'll see if they do next news story third quarter sony report of course, they being on the general Japanese March 31st year-end fiscal structure, they said that sales for PlayStation VR were in line with expectations. Now, they have never released sales figures, so this is the closest we're going to get to that. So whatever expectations means, 
they're saying they hit those. And based on the story from the other day where, you know, stock is going to be plentiful again, supply chain's going to pick up again, it seems to indicate that they're moving at a healthy clip, which is good. Now, this next story I thought was really cool. Came across this on Mashable. And there's a student, university student, technology, who managed to figure out a way to merge HoloLens with virtual reality using the HTC Vive specifically. I'm sure it could apply to a Rift as well. But what, well, not sure. I imagine it would. What he's able to do is, imagine you've got somebody in HTC Vive, pretend they're playing Minecraft, okay? That person sees that whole VR environment, the sky, the ground, the obstacles, and they can then build stuff like a house. The person with the HoloLens doesn't see the world around the person wearing the VR, but they do see the objects that they manipulate and build. So if he was building a house, say in Minecraft or a castle, that castle would slowly start taking shape in the room that they're in. So a very cool novel way for other people to engage in a virtual reality experience. I don't know how much of that would ever be commercial because it crosses boundaries, cross-play, etc. But for hackers to mess around with that and come up with some cool stuff, that would be pretty neat. Being able to experience what they're experiencing in VR at that level. And likewise, the person with the Vive, they see an avatar representation of the person wearing the HoloLens. So they both have awareness of each other and the items being manipulated. Very cool. All right, this last story. Bumped into this one on Daily Mail, a UK paper, which uh, I know doesn't always have the best of news, but I thought this was interesting because it's a virtual reality mirror game that was developed to help diagnose schizophrenia. Now, schizophrenia, for as long as I can remember, is one of those often misunderstood things. Mostly, you say schizophrenia and people automatically assume voices and that's kind of it. They hear voices. That can be a part of the symptoms, absolutely. But there's so much more to schizophrenia than that. And we don't need to get into that here. Suffice it to say, they're using this virtual reality tool as a way to diagnose it, hopefully earlier, where it's more treatable through medication, etc. And what they've done is created this mirror game to look for motions, motions and actions. And the reason for that, kind of like with Parkinson's, what they call the Parkinson's gait, right? The G-A-I-T, the, the, the walking shuffle. That's a telltale sign a lot of times for somebody with Parkinson's. It could just be somebody who has that gait, of course, but it's, it's a strong visual indicator. That's kind of the same of what they're doing here. A person with schizophrenia, they say there's enough commonalities with how the body moves and interprets. They can pick up on those nuances. Not perfect, but they can pick up on it, and it's a tool to aid them in diagnosing. Now, this is still kind of in the testing. They've written in a peer-reviewed science journal. I'll have that in the link below. So, you know, I know of somebody with schizophrenia. Maybe some of you do as well. Very interesting from that point of view, just to kind of read this and go through that. And hell, even if you don't, it's still pretty interesting because, again, it's virtual reality in an area other than games contributing. Guys, that's it for Thursday. Tomorrow, Gaming Night Friday. Can't wait. It's been a busy week. Cheers, guys.